Hi everybody. So in this video, we're going to take a look at uh, module five, the extra practice. So we'll kind of get our blank paper out and module five. And so we're going to do the first, the check your understanding. And there's just one, but it has four parts. So number one, A. And, and for all four of these, it says, Explain whether this is a change in demand or a change in quantity demanded. And they even give you the, the idea that, is it a movement along the demand curve or does it move the demand curve? And again, a movement along is just changing quantity demanded. Um, now, the easiest thing to remember is that actually the only thing that will move along the demand curve is the price of the good because price doesn't shift the curve, but it does cause you to move along the demand curve. Um, oh, sorry, that was weak. Price doesn't shift the curve. Okay, right, I'm back to the uh, regularly scheduled programming. Uh, a store owner finds that customers are willing to pay more for umbrellas on rainy days. Now, that's not the price of the good causing people to want to buy more. It's people's tastes and preferences for the good. And so we would say their tastes, right, change during rainy days. And so therefore demand increases. And that's all you really have to say there. It's a shift of the demand curve and it's an increase. Um, for B, we're going to say when XYZ Telecom, a long distance telephone service, boy, that's, that's like dating this textbook a little bit. We don't do that. Uh, offered reduced rates on weekends, its volume of weekend calling increased sharply. So uh, putting aside the fact that they used to do this, like back in my day, but the, this is saying the price of the telephone call changes and therefore the volume or the quantity of telephone calls changes. This is just saying a change in price, therefore a change in quantity demand. So that, that one's all out is there. We'll put C next to it, that way we don't use too much paper here. Uh, people buy more long stem roses the week of Valentine's Day, even though prices are higher. That's again, it's tastes. People have a taste for that. I mean, not literally, right? You're not eating roses or that would be kind of weird. And it's just increase in demand. Um, D, a sharp rise in the price of gasoline, right? So here we go, the price, right? Causes people to join carpools in order to reduce their gasoline quantity of purchases. So again, this is just saying there's a change in price of the thing, and therefore there's a change in quantity demanded. And again, that little triangle that I'm drawing means delta. And you can go, and that, that stands for change, rate of change. And so you can just use that abbreviation. And the little three dots mean therefore. So you really don't have to write very much in this class to get your point across. Okay, now uh, tackle the test multiple choice. Again, you don't have to do these for, um, for the bonus credit for these modules, but I know that many of you would like to know the answers probably because we have a quiz coming up. Um, so number one, which of the following would increase demand for a normal good? Now I'm gonna write off to the side the, the merit, merit, shifts demand, right? And just very quickly, market size, ex, that's the number of buyers, expectations about future prices, related goods, like substitutes and complements, income, and tastes and preferences. So those are the demand shifters. Uh, which would increase the demand for a normal good? A decrease in price, no, because price doesn't shift the curve. Income, well, income's a shifter, but if there's a decrease in income and it's normal, then we would actually expect the demand to decrease with good. The price of a substitute, okay? So if there's a, a substitute goes down in price, well, people are gonna buy the substitute. They're not gonna buy more of whatever this original thing is. Consumer taste for a good. Again, if people don't have a taste for it, that would decrease the demand for it. The price of a compliment. Now, compliments are things that are bought together. So if like hot dogs and hot dog buns are the classic example, if the price of hot dogs goes down, what's gonna to happen to the demand for hot dog buns? Well, it'll go up because people are gonna go, oh, the hot dogs are on sale, I'll buy those. And, and so the quantity of the hot dogs changes, but the demand for the hot dog buns actually changes. So we would say E. Number two says a decrease in the price of butter would most likely decrease the demand for, and now this one's, this one's I don't like it because it relies on you knowing information about Complements and substitutes. So margarine, and I've had students over the years who are like, what is margarine? It's the, I can't believe it's not butter. It's, it's not really butter, it's a butter substitute. Um, margarine is a substitute for butter. So a decrease in the price of butter would decrease the demand for margarine. Um, that, that's that one. I, I will go through the others, but feel free to skip ahead if, you, if you're like, I don't care. Um, bagels are generally like complements with butter. 
right? Because you, you would buy like a bagel and you'd buy butter to put butter on the bagel. And so if the decrease in the price of butter, you would actually expect bagel demand to increase. Um, butter and jelly, I don't know that those are substitutes, but I, uh, it's kind of weird. If there's a decrease in the, I guess if there's substitutes and there's a decrease in the price of butter, then there, there could be a decrease in the demand for I don't know. It would have that's a weird one. So uh, this this one, I'm going to tweak it and make it much clearer on the quiz because I think this is weird and it relies on you knowing stuff um, about complements and substitutes. Um, milk and syrup. I don't even know how those are really related to butter, but whatever. Number three. Again, I'm going to change the wording on number two just to make it super clear. Like this one's a compliment for this one. Uh, number three. If an increase in income leads to a decrease in demand then the good is. So remember, there are two types of goods. There's inferior goods and normal goods. And with normal goods, if your income goes up, you buy more of it. With an inferior good, if your income goes up, you buy less of it. That's like ramen noodles. So we would say a decrease in income uh, would be B. Number four is, uh, which of the following will occur if consumers expect the price of a good to fall in the coming months? Well, they're not gonna buy very much today. Remember, think about like Black Friday sales in the end of November on televisions, people aren't going to buy that many televisions in October if they can help it. So today, right, which of the following will happen today, demand will decrease because people will say, I'm going to delay the purchase. So that's D. Number five, which of the following will increase the demand for disposable diapers? Um, a new baby boom? Sure. If there's more babies, sure. Because that's like the number of buyers, although, yeah. So um, concern over the effect, that's taste and preferences. That would make people not want to buy them. Um, cloth diapers, a decrease in the price of cloth diapers. If people were buying more cloth diapers, they would buy fewer and, and shift the demand curve for disposable diapers and decrease it. A move toward early or potty training of children. Um, no, that would decrease the demand for diapers. A decrease in the price of disposable diapers. Uh, that, just, that just moves along the disposable diapers curve. Okay, now let's talk free response number two and we'll get you on your way. Um, this is a this is an okay first one. I think it's kind of a pain. If you read it over, it makes sense. Uh, number two, just draw a correctly labeled graph showing demand for apples. Okay, Q and P and demand done. On your graph, illustrate what happens to demand for apples if your report says that uh, apple a day really does keep the doctor away. Well, that, that would increase demand. So D one. Ta da! All done. See you next time.